This is part three of our selection programming series, and in this lesson, we're going to be looking at nested if statements. So what is a nested if statement? Before we get to that, let's recap what we have done so far. So we have done a normal if statement where we have a condition, and if the condition is true, it will run a selection of statements. So an example of this would be, if your mark is about 50, display the word pass. That's it. So that code will either run or it won't run depending on that condition. Then we said, hey, well, what happens if that condition is false? We also want to do something. Then we used an else, an if else statement. So if the condition is true, do the first statement. But if it's false, do the second statement. So that would be an example of if your mark is about 50, you display the word pass. But otherwise, you display the word fail. Now, those have been the cases that we've had where you want to display two possible things. There's two options. We either do this code or we do that code depending on a condition. But what happens if there are three possible conditions? Like if this condition happens, we want to do this. If this condition happens, we want to do that. And if that condition happens, we want to do something else. So the, in that case, what do we do? Well, we can use a nested if. And the nested if looks something like this. As you can see, we've actually added the if statement over there onto the else. So we said if the first condition is true, it will run that first statement. If it's false, it will jump out of that part and go to the next else if and check that condition. If that condition is true, it will run the second set of statements. But if that condition is false, it will jump out of that and go to the else. So if condition one is true, it will only do the first set of statements and then that's it. If the second condition is true, it will only run those statements. And if no conditions are true, it will run the else statements at the end. So an example of this could be if your mark is above 80, you want to display distinction, but if it's above 50, you want the word pass, and if you don't have a pass, if it's anything below 50, then obviously it's, it's a fail. So you see there are three possibilities in that case. And it doesn't just have to be three. You could keep this going on forever and ever. You could say, if this condition is true, else if this condition is true, else if this condition is true, uh, and you can keep going. As long as you remember the rule, the else, the line before the else, you'll notice there are no semicolons in the line above the else. So let's see this example in Delphi. So let's look at this example where we've got a, a get result button and we're going to get a value from here to get the result of whether they get an A, B or C or D or so. Now, if we click on here, we, we've got our mark. Now, we could think about, okay, if the R mark, is greater than equal to 80 then what do we want to do we want to display the word show message they got an a how about that huh so there we go there's a nice little a else they didn't get an a so but what happens if they got a b well the second option would be if the mark else if the r mark is greater than equal to 70 and it's our mark is less than equal to 79 because if it's a mark between 70 and 79 it would be a b so remember if you use and you must use brackets around your criteria over here so this would be the scenario the, the second potential scenario and if that was true so see those red lines disappear so now i can say begin and uh, end and i'm gonna say oh if that's true we want to say show message hey that's a b now i want to show you a little figure so if the mark is 80 or more it will display a but if the mark is between 70 and 79 it will display b now i want to show you that i can actually do this and it will still work why why, why, why will it still work well if the mark is greater than 80 then it will display the A. If it doesn't, if it's not greater than 80, then it has to be lower than 80 for it to move to this part. So when I get to this part, I already know that that mark is definitely less than 80. It's 79 or lower. So I don't need to check that. I can just check if it's, hey, we're looking at only the numbers when we get to here. We're only looking at the numbers 79 and lower. So we want all those numbers from 79 and lower that are also above 70, then display a B. You see how Nesliffs makes our life a little bit easier here. And then I delete that semicolon because, well, I'll leave it there so it's just to remind us. But I can literally just go, hey, I'm going to copy this code. I'm going to copy this code. There we go. It's so easy. Copy it. 
I'm going to go here, I'm going to paste it. Paste it. But you see there's a red line there? Well, because we must remove the semicolon before the else. Now, if I get to this point, so if it's greater than 80, display. If it's not greater than 80, then check if it's greater than 70. If it's not greater than 70, it'll jump to here. So I know when it gets to here that it's all the numbers 69 and lower. So therefore, I just have to check if it's, if of those numbers that are 69 and lower, just check the numbers that are 60 to 69. And then I'll display a C. And then, what else? I say, hey, remove that semicolon above the else. If I get to this if statement, I'm only looking at those that are below 60 because it would never get to here unless it has failed all of these options. And if it's failed all those options, I know for a fact that it's definitely not above 80, it's definitely not above 70, it's definitely not above 60. So over here, we must be uh, 59 and lower. So hey, if it's a 50 to 59, we can display the word C. And we can keep going and keep going. Um, I'm going to say, like, let's say you fail after this, else, if it's none of those options, then the last option is going to be, hey, uh, show message, sorry for you. It's, I'm tired of saying fail. Sorry for you. There we go. So why is there a red line there? Ah, oh, because the line before the else must not have a semicolon. So what's happening is if this condition is true, it will run this code and then jump all the way out of the if statement to whatever code comes after the if statement. If this condition is not true, if it's false, it'll jump to the next if statement and check if that condition's true. If that condition's true, it will run that code and then jump out the if statement. Cool, not bad. If that is false and that is false, it'll jump to this one and check it. If that's false, it'll jump out of it to this one. If that's false, it'll jump out of it and do the else part. If all of them are false and there's no other if statement left, it'll run the else part. So there we go. If there was no else part and all of them were false, then it would do none of those codes and just jump out the if statement and carry on. So let's see how that works. Let's see if it runs. Let's see if it runs. It's compiling. There we go. So our 89, we know that that mark is going to be an A. So we display in a whole bunch of things. Get result. Ah. Oh. It displays an A, but will it display B, C, or D, or well? No, it stops there. And if I make that a 75, you see it failed that option, jumped to this option. Hey, it's between 79 and 70, so it's a B. Display the B, and then it doesn't do anything else. And if it's a 65, it'll display just the C part. And if I put a 55, it goes, hey, D, and if I display 49, it goes, hey, no, sorry for you. If I didn't have these else's, I just want to show you what it looks like if I didn't have these else's. If I didn't have these else's, um, if, oh, it's long going to do that. If I have them all separately, this could be quite annoying if I did it this way. Oh, it's taking a long time. So there we go. Take all these else's out. And if I do that, remember to put the semicolons back where they should go. If I did something like this, and let's just take out this else here. Not to go down, just, just delete it. Boom. Okay. If I had something like that, if I just had the exact same scenario, but I just took the else out, what would happen is, let's see, if I have 89 and say get result, it would still work for the A, but you'll notice that this is a whole separate statement. It's got nothing to do with that one. So it jumps to here. Is 89 greater than 70? Yes, it is. So it's going to display a B. And guess what? 89 is also greater than 60. So it's going to display a C. So it's going to, it's going to display all of them. And that's not what we want. That's why we have those else. If I did it this way, then I would definitely have to have the and. And then you say, ah, mark is less than equal to 79 for, for it to work this way if you want to separate these and not use nested ifs. Remember, there must be a, you see the little red lines, are they going to be red lines? Hey, what's the problem? You must have brackets around your conditions there. Okay, so that's nested ifs. It makes your coding a lot easier. You don't have to write as much. So that's nested ifs. For other videos in this video series, as well as other Delphi-related IT videos, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, and let us know what you think 
And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.